In today's video, we're going to take a look at uh, building and testing the optional RF noise source that's part of this Ham It Up uh, HF Up Converter. So when you purchase uh, the HF Up Converter, uh, most of the passive components for the noise source are, are already populated, but you've got to buy the optional noise source kit to get the remaining components to build up the noise source. And there's really only a couple, a small handful of components that you need to populate. The noise source schematic is shown down here, and it consists of a uh, switching regulator to boost the 5 volt bus from the uh, USB port up to a 12 volt supply. So a simple uh, boost switching voltage regulator here. And everything is populated except for the boost regulator chip uh, right here, and it's right there on the board. Uh, on the uh, noise source, it's basically just a reverse biased uh, Zener diode. So basically putting the Zener into avalanche breakdown or Zener breakdown. And that basically creates noise. That noise is AC coupled into two uh, broadband RF power amplifiers. This is just the bias for those power amplifiers. Uh, these two amplifiers are not populated on the board, so they're two of the components that you need to place. And these are SOT189 uh, packages here and here. And they're a little tricky to solder, so we'll, we'll kind of go in and uh, show you how you do that. But all the other passive components that are here are already populated. So the only thing you've really got to put on is the switching regulator IC, these two amplifier packages, the SMA output connector, and a jumper uh, at the uh, power input to enable or disable the noise source. So the first thing we'll install is the little 5-lead TSOT5 packaged uh, SC4503 switching regulator chip, and that goes right here. So uh, with these surface mount parts, I like to add a very small amount of flux to the board. It just makes it a little bit easier when uh, reflowing the parts and uh, get a good uh, flow of the solder when we do that. Okay, to solder this part in, uh, I'll usually just reach in, lay the part in there with the tweezers, and try to tack a corner in, and to get one corner to kind of stick and get reflowed. And then with one corner stuck, the part will kind of stay. Then we can more carefully go in and work on the other parts, or the, other uh, the other pins, I should say. All right, now I can go in and just uh, re-solder the other pins here very carefully. I've got some very fine gauge solder. And we'll go in and uh, touch each of those up. So that one, get the middle one in here. And we'll do this corner one again. And then we'll reach over and do the other these side. These SOT uh, 189 packages can be a little tricky to solder because the whole bottom of the package has got a large pad. So what I plan to do is to uh, heat up the pad here and get the solder refloat on the pad with a good bit of flux on it. And then drop the part on there, let that uh, you know wet and solder, and then I'll go in, uh, and retouch all the leads. Okay, so we'll start off by uh, adding a little bit of flux to uh, uh, the uh, pad here. I'm also going to put a little bit on the bottom of the part. And we'll bring the soldering iron in here and, uh, and heat up that pad and get ready to put the part on here. So now that pad's all nice and heated up. We'll lay the part in here. And let's see, if we heat up the pad on the part, we'll get this thing to flow down there nicely. Okay. So that part is now in there, and I can go in and retouch all the leads. So I've retouched all the leads, everything is reflowed, and I like to verify that just with a continuity check. So what we'll do is, uh, this lead should be connected to ground, and it is. Let's see, this top lead here should be connected to this capacitor, so let's get that lead in there. And that is. And then this bottom lead should be connected to this capacitor, and it is. All right, we just need to do the same for the other SOT 189 package. All right, with that uh, surface mount soldering done, uh, I just want to take a little bit of uh, isopropyl alcohol and clean up the uh, the flux here because uh, that kind of tends to make a mess. All right, so the next thing we'll put in is the uh, edge mount SMA connector, and that slips right over the edge of the board. And we'll just slide that over to line it up with the uh, the ground plane and the center pin contact, and then just uh, lay some solder fillets in there. Okay. And don't forget to uh, solder the back side as well. All 
All right, the first thing we'll do is verify that the uh, it biases up properly. So we'll plug in the uh, uh, ham it up uh, device first, and then uh, install the jumper to power up the noise source. The LEDs lit up, so that's always a good sign. We'll take a look at ground and power coming in here. We're about uh, 4.72. That's uh, not too bad for. Uh, that's probably what we've got coming in on the USB side of things, and we do so. Uh, so that's normal. And then the 12 volts is only used to bias up the uh, Zener diode. So if we take a look at the power right above that resistor stack, we're sitting at about 12.14 volts. The RF amplifiers are biased up through a couple of inductors to the VDD RF, which is the you know 5 volt supply. So if we probe those, 4.53 and 4.53. So it looks like everything's biased right. This should be working, so let's take a look at its output. Alright, we'll take the output of the noise source and connect it right up to the spectrum analyzer. It's looking from 9 kilohertz to 400 megahertz, and we can see you know, a pretty flat noise, uh, noise power across that frequency range. We see a spike here at 125 megahertz, and then at 250. Uh, that's actually um, my crystal oscillator here that's used as the local oscillator. If we yank that out, uh, those spikes will essentially go away. So the noise floor, or the noise source itself, is pretty flat. So how would one use this? Well, one example would be to take a look at the passband characteristic of the up converter. So what I can do is take the output of the noise source and connect it to the input of the up converter circuit, and then take the output of the up converter and connect that to the spectrum analyzer. Now I've got it connected right, or the switch is thrown in the through position. So we can actually see that it's just a, a through connection from the input to the output now. But when I flip to the up converter position, okay, now we can actually just see the passband characteristic. And what I'll do is I'll I'm gonna change the uh, reference level here so we can see that response a little bit better. So this is the passband characteristic of the up converter. So we had noise power at the input all the way across here, but now uh, we're only passing, essentially we're taking that low frequency energy and up converting that to uh, to the passband, and this is what's used in the RTL receiver. So we can actually see there's my local oscillator frequency, that's 125 megahertz, and then this is the up converted HF frequency band. So that's one way of using a noise source is to very quickly give you a nice broadband signal source that you can put through a frequency dependent network or amplifier or something like that to see how well it works uh, very quickly either using a spectrum analyzer or even using the FFT function of a digital scope. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Real quick one here on, uh, on the noise source, putting it together, and then just verifying its operation and showing uh, one example of how it can be used. Thanks again for watching.